Judges chapter number four. The Bible reads, And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Heresheth of the Gentiles. And the, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, she judged Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulun? And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor, for the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Nebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. Now Heber, the Kenite, which was of the children of Hobab, the father-in-law of Moses, had severed himself from the Kenites and pitched his tent into the plain of Zanum, which was by Kadesh. And they showed Sisera that Barak, the son of Abinoam, was gone up to Mount Tabor. And Sisera gathered together all his chariots, even 900 chariots of iron, and all the people that were with him from Harasheth of the Gentiles into the river, under the river of Kishon. And Deborah said unto Barak, Up, for this is the day in which the Lord hath delivered Sisera into thine hand. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And the Lord discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak. So that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Herosheth of the Gentiles and all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword and there was not a man left. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber, the Kenite. And Jael went, up, went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, Turn in, my lord, turn in to me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk and gave him drink and covered him. Again he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, that thou shalt say, No. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come, and I will show thee the man whom thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin the king of Canaan before the children of Israel, and the hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against Jabin the king of Canaan until they had destroyed Jabin king of Canaan. Brother Lucas, you pray for our service tonight, please. All right, well, uh, so tonight or this evening, I'd like to go through our uh, third installment of Heroes of the Faith. I've selected 12 uh, heroes uh, from the Bible, you know, to go against the world because the world is basically saying, well, you got to, you know, uh, you know, have a role model as this guy that has been affected by, you know, radioactive, you know, sludge or whatever, and they have powers, whereas there are actual heroes of faith in the Bible, people that we can uh, learn from, learn about, we can emulate what they do, we can uh, draw from their experiences, and we can uh, actually increase our faith. 
by copying them and knowing who they are. And this time I want to talk about Jael. And we went through Judges. Right now we're still in the book of Judges. We went through Judges uh, and we read this chapter before. We studied this chapter before. But I want to pay attention to some of the details about Jael and want to uh, kind of sh show you reasons why I think that she is a, a great example of a hero. And first and foremost, heroes are not all male, okay? They, they are uh, women that love the Lord. They are women that are empowered by God, and they are in, in our Bible. They're, they're women that trust God. They have faith in the Lord. And uh, J.L. is, is uh, one of them. Um, he, when it comes to thinking about female or male, we are talking about role models. So every boy and man ought to have a male as their role model. But in the same way, every girl and woman ought to have a woman as their role model when it comes to faith, when it comes to following the Lord. Uh, you know, women are to learn from women and men are to learn uh, from men when it comes to the, the roles. Uh, uh, if you look down at verse number 17, verse number 17, it says, How be it Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, in, uh, the wife of Heber the Kenite, for there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. Now, there's not much said about Jael. And when we're looking at this story here, uh, I, I think that women can still relate to her story, what she went through. Um, we, you know, she wasn't super strong. We, we just finished up Samson. She wasn't really physically strong. However, there were some difficulties that she faced in life. She had to obey God actively, and she had you know, persecution literally come through her front door and be there with her. And she had to exercise boldness and righteousness before God and before the enemies of God. And so one of the things that we do know about J.L. is that she had a husband. And, you know, you, you might gloss over that like, oh, she, she was married. She had a husband. No, but that's very significant. Um, there's a difference between a woman that's married and a woman that's unmarried or uh, a virgin. Go ahead and flip to First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. This chapter is a great chapter on marriage. And I, 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 I want to draw out of this story here. One of the things I think made J.L. A, a, a great woman is that she was married uh, and she wasn't a woman out of control. She wasn't, you know, you know, off on her own declaring that she didn't need a man or anything like that. She was sober. She had a right, her, uh, her right mind on her. She was uh, obedient unto God. But what we can draw from this story is that she had a husband and not only did she have a husband, her husband was a, a very prominent figure in society he knew uh, you know of, of the king he uh, had a relationship with with the uh, governing body if you will um, and she was a strong woman okay and she was under authority that's contrary to what's popular or trendy now now women are li being lied to girls are being lied to saying that the only way you can be, you know, a strong woman and have authority or a strong woman and be independent is if you're not married or if you're not under authority. But JL actually, she was a very strong woman, which we will see, very strong uh, and uh, bold and independent, but she was under authority. Now, when I say independent, she was able to make, you know, righteous decisions on her own. Okay, she 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 wasn't uh, uh, being a puppet of, of any kind. You know, uh, uh, Heber, her husband, he took care of her, and she she had uh, authority under him of her household. Um, and and when it comes to marriage, okay, I, I think it's great. I think it's uh, awesome that J. L. is mentioned as a, a woman who is married. Okay. Because when you look at her story and look at everything that she did and knowing that she was under authority, it kind of gives you some insight into her character. She wasn't just this, you know, some, some wild woman out there, you know, just declaring how great a person she was. No, she was actually under authority. Her husband, he had a job. He worked outside of the home, but she took care of the home. She was in the home and she is the one who dealt with the enemy. OK, she is the one who had to deal with Sisera. And that takes a lot of character for a woman of God to do that. Look at verse number 34 and 1 Corinthians chapter 7. The Bible says, There is a difference also between a wife and a virgin. 
the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married careth for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And when, when I was reminded of this fact that, you know, a married woman, you know, she, she's concerned with pleasing her husband. I think a part of the godliness, the faith, faithfulness of Jael had to do with she had a husband. She was under authority and she, she wanted to please him. She wanted to, to support him. The, the, the time period that they lived in was a time of fear. You've got Jab, this king Jabin of the Canaanites, enemies of the God, you know, oppressing uh, the Israelites. And they need they need help. They need deliverance. They need to to uh, come out from under the, the rule of this this wicked king Jabin. And we have J.L. living in this time period where fear was the thing. I mean, it was uh, probably in most cases it was justified to be afraid because, oh, don't say something about J- uh, Jabin or, you know, don't say something about Sisera, his, you know, his captain of his, of his host. So there's, J.L. lived in the time where she had to deal with every day, well, am I going to, you know, trust my flesh? Am am I going to, you know, be quiet and stay out of the scenes and just let the the, the government do what they're going to do? Just let Jabin do whatever you're going to do? Or is she going to stand on the word of God, stand on the fact that God has given her power and authority to do what is right, destroying the enemies of God? Uh, she, She was... Uh, a, a married woman, so she had more responsibilities than a, a virgin or an unmarried woman. I, I, I was kind of tripping up on that because another difference between a, a married woman and a virgin is the married woman, she has extra responsibilities, especially if she has children. Now, children are not mentioned here uh, with JL. I wouldn't be surprised if she had any children, but the Bible doesn't say that she had any children. Nonetheless, she had a husband and she had a household that she had to take care of when uh, um, uh, Heber, her husband, was not at, in the house. And so uh, a, a married woman, she's occupied with making sure that, that, that she is right with God, making sure that her husband is doing well, and making sure that her children are doing well, whether they're being fed, the house is clean, the, the uh, uh, refrigerator has food in it. You know, there's a lot of things that, that dip, distinguishes a married woman from a uh, an unmarried woman and the blessing here is is associated with a woman being married and she didn't have to you know go out go out in the world and establish that she was some great woman no she was a great woman in the position that she was in married under authority and obeying God at the same time uh, go ahead and turn to judges chapter 5 judges chapter 5. Now, a part of the responsibility with children, I know the children aren't mentioned here of JL, but it's teaching them to fear God as well, right? To teach the children to fear God, an unmarried woman or a virgin uh, doesn't have that responsibility. And yet, uh, JL, if she had children, that would be a responsibility for her. It's not just you know cooking and cleaning, but if there are children involved, well, she, she ought to be taking care of the children, teaching them to fear God, to o- obey the Lord. And uh, we see in... Uh, a little bit more about her character as Barak and Deborah sing this duet. They sing a song about Jael. If you look down at verse number 24, in this song it says, Blessed above women shall Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. That, that's a verse from this duet, this song that they're singing, praising Jael praising how uh, uh, great of a woman of God she is, but they didn't leave out her husband. But at the same time, she is blessed above all other women of the tent. What does it mean, woman of the tent? Well, I think it's stay, just stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home wife. She, she stayed at the house. She took care of the house. She was a woman of the tent, and the Bible says that she was blessed. She didn't have to go out to establish her own righteousness to let everybody know that she was some great woman of God. Hey, you know, today it's kind of trendy for, you know, women to be like, oh, yeah, I'm a pastor. Or I'm a, a, you know, a, a, a deaconess or a prophetess. You'll have women that will say that, that try to, you know, make themselves look great. But look, if you are obeying God, you are in your household, in your right role as a woman. Well, that speaks volumes above every single woman that would try to go outside of her role. That's actually more attractive, something to sing about. And we see that Barak and Deborah, they sing about this. 
and they say that she's blessed. She was at home out of all the women that were taking care of the tents, taking care of their, their household. Well, Jael st- stood out as uh, a woman blessed above women in the tent. And we know that, that she was at, at the home when Sisera arrived. She was there. Heber wasn't there, but she was. And th- that is uh, a, uh, a sign of her character, wanting to be steadfast and stay there, not just supporting her husband, but following the Lord, obeying God. And every woman ought to strive for this. This is a, a good position to be in, a good thing for uh, a woman to want to do to serve the Lord, serving her husband, being in authority, but yet being strong, not being some you know pushover, not being someone who, who tries to ignore scripture. No, a woman under authority is a great woman of God. And J.L. shows us that in her uh, uh, attitude here. Flip over to 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5, J.L.'s husband, Heber, we don't have a lot of details about him except that he, he, he was obviously successful, right? He knew the king, he knew the, the leaders of the Kenites so much so where he decided he was going to separate himself from the Kenites and establish his dwelling uh, so, somewhere uh, uh, further away, okay? Um, but at the same time, being a woman of the tent, J.L., she was following the will of God. Look at verse number 14 in 1 Timothy chapter 5. It says, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And all of that is one verse. So it's not just young women ought to marry, but young women ought to bear children and young women ought to guide the house. And a young women also ought to not give occasion to the adversary or to Satan or give in to temptation to speak reproachfully, to say things that they ought not to be speaking about. I know there's a, uh, you know, women like this. If if you go to a grocery store, you'll see magazines at the, the, uh, the checkout area. And most of the magazines are geared to women. They have a woman on there, a big hair. It's, it's trying to attract women to that. And Women like to, to go look at hair. That's because hair is their glory. They, I, I mean, I have no problem with women liking hair, but if they're spending all their time flipping through magazines, like, uh, you know, adoring and admiring all, you know, all what's in that magazine, it's like, no, no that, that, that's, that's not what God wants you to do when, he, when it comes to you know, your hair being a glory unto you. Yeah, you know, take care of your health, beautify yourself, but don't spend all your time, wasting all your time, in, you know, sucked into magazines about beauty. How about you spend more time serving the Lord or reading your Bible, or preaching to your children, preaching to your, your sisters, your daughters? That, is, that, that will keep you from uh, the enemy you, you know, uh, tempting you to speak reproachfully, to say things that you, not ought to, you ought not to say. Because also in those magazines of uh, those women, they'll have articles where they talk bad about women or about men or about their husband, or they'll, they'll have articles about, you know, how bad this guy, you know, talked to them. And it's like, that's, women don't need to be in those situations or be drawn away from the truth. They don't need to be repeating that stuff. What they ought to be of is the truth. Um, flip back to Judges chapter four. Judges chapter four. Again, that time that they were in was a time of fear. Right. It was a fearful time. Everybody was afraid. There were highways where people didn't even want to walk down the highway because they thought something would happen to them. You're in Judges chapter four. I'll read Judges five, verse six. It says, in the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. That time period, it was they were full of fear. People didn't want to just walk down the, the, the normal highway, but they would get around by going to byways and you know side streets and the, uh, uh, I guess they call them frontage roads now. They would try to go, go around because there's so much fear. Uh, but JL wasn't afraid. And we see that when she encounters Sisera, she it, literally encounters the enemy face to face. She was not afraid of him. She looked at him in his face. Look at verse number 18 in chapter four, where you are says, and J.L. went out to meet Sisera. So she didn't wait for him to come in, kick down the door. You know, Sisera came and she went outside to, to meet him. She, she wasn't afraid. 
And, you know, women ought not to be afraid, especially when they, they have a house, they have a husband that loves them, they're serving God, they're listening to the Lord, they're reading their Bible. There's no reason to be, be afraid. The Bible says God did not give us a spirit of fear. That includes women as well. And our heroes, okay, our heroes, we don't want to see them when they are afraid of everything because they wouldn't even be a hero if, they're, if there's some guy that's afraid. You want to follow someone who will meet the enemy at the gate, who will say, hey, Sisera, who are you? Why are you here? It says here that Jael went out to meet Sisera and said unto him, so she's talking, turn in, my Lord, turn in to me. She's saying, oh, hey, come in. She knew who he was. She wasn't disrespectful, like, uh, I mean, uh, like a, a quiet or a woman with a meek spirit. She wasn't cussing at him. Oh, you must be that blankety blank Sisera. No. She said, come on, come on in, Sisera. She's following the Lord. She's, she has her, her uh, sobriety intact. She is, you know, of her uh, right mind, and she's doing the will of the Lord. No fear, right? This is the captain of the enemy's host, the captain of the enemy's army, the, the enemy, not just enemy of Israel, but enemies of God. That's who these Canaanites were. She says here, turn in my Lord, turn unto me, fear not. And when he had turned in unto her, into the, into the tent, she covered him with a mantle. That, that's like a, uh, almost like a jacket kind of, um, uh, covered him with a mantle. And he said unto her, give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink for, for I am thirsty. Now, this is very interesting. I spoke about this before when we, were, when we went through this chapter. But uh, the thing I want to point out here is that she was very bold. She wasn't, she, she wasn't uh, saying, okay, I'll get you that water that you want, uh, you Mr. Cicero. She, it says here, and she opened a bottle of milk. She opened a bottle of milk and gave it to him. Uh, he obviously drank it, and she covered him. And so in her boldness, she, she didn't care that... You know, this is a, the uh, uh, enemy. I, I, I better, you know, listen to what the enemy has to say. No, she, she was bold. She knew he was the enemy. She knew that he, he's done, that God didn't want him there, that God uh, didn't want him alive. Excuse me. She knew that it was over for Sisera. And she was like, no, I, I'm going to give you some milk. Very bold. And again, JL is a hero in, in, in my view, simply because she was bold, S staring in the face of the enemy of God not cowering, not trying to figure out what she's going to do in her life. No, she was, you know, stalwart, steadfast. Just, she knew what she was going to do. She was going to stay there and said, no, I'll give you some milk. Um, go ahead and flip to uh, Psalm 119. Psalm 119. The most important thing here is that J.L., she obeyed God. Her confidence was not in her flesh. Her confidence was not in man. Oh, oh, Cicero. Oh, yeah, uh, I'll get you water or whatever you want. No, her confidence, confidence it was in God. She, she didn't care that Cicero was some general or something. She knew that that was the enemy of God, and she was going to take care of business. The, the Bible says that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Uh, now, the other thing about this I, I, I want to mention is in Judges chapter 5, it says that in verse 25, it says, Sisera asked water and she gave him milk and brought forth butter in a lordly dish. Now, uh, um, dairy products like milk, butter, cheese, these products, they actually increase serotonin and melatonin levels in the, in the body. Okay. And those uh, levels being elevated would cause someone to feel drowsy or go to sleep. And so some people will say, hey, if, if you're having trouble going to sleep, this is not medical advice. I've just heard this before. They'll say, hey, heat up a cup of milk and drink that and it should help you go to sleep. That's because of the, the science behind melatonin and serotonin. Uh, the other thing that makes JL a hero, okay, in, in my view, is she was very intelligent. Some, some people are afraid that, oh, if I get married, you know, oh, I'm going to be in the house. I'm not going to be smart. Like, what? what? No, whoever said that? I mean, because women are, literally think that they have to go out, get a, a, a degrees and get a master's and get a Ph.D. JL didn't have to do that. She was a woman of the tent. She stayed in the tent. She was under authority, bold. She was fearless and intelligent. 
How does she know about this chemistry? How does she know about serotonin? Well, she did her own experiments. She probably even uh, uh, had milk herself and was like, oh, wow, this you know, makes me go to sleep or it makes me feel drowsy. How, it, the Bible doesn't tell us that, but she knew. She was intelligent. And the, the Bible does teach us you know, to, to not just grow in faith, but to grow in knowledge. JL, she grew in knowledge. She knew uh, she had uh, uh, some basic chemistry skills. Okay, She didn't get a master's degree in chemistry. She didn't get a master's degree or a PhD in, in, in uh, chemicals and, and science or whatever. She didn't have to do all that because she trusted the Lord and she always was trying to uh, uh, better herself and educate herself and be, be smart. Okay, You don't have to go out and get a degree to be smart. They, that, that's, the degree doesn't make you smart, okay? Actually, in a lot of cases, there are a lot of very stupid people, foolish people that have degrees, PhDs. There are CEOs, some CEOs of companies where they've gone through all the ranks and they're still a foolish person, but they know how to talk, talk to people and get other people to do their stuff. They know how to manipulate other people, so they're good at that, which is not a good thing. But they are not smart themselves, and we are to be intelligent and smart. And the fact that she knew that, uh uh, I'm gonna give you water, I'm gonna give you milk, Sisera, she knew that uh, milk was going to aid her in her quest to follow the Lord. Uh, I had you turn to Psalm 119. I like this psalm here because it kind of bolsters the fact that she didn't need to get a master's degree, okay? And I kind of want to hammer that out, you know. The, the world will lie to you and say, you need to go to four-year, six-year, eight-year school in order to be successful in life. You don't. Man, male or female, you don't need to do that. She didn't need to do that. Look at verse number 97 in Psalm 119. It says, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. By the way, I, the verses that we're about to read, I picture JL as either having read these meditated on these, you know, thought about these, you know, just, just thought about the, these concepts here, okay, uh, simply because this is how we get knowledge, right? The first thing, how, oh, how love I li thy law, it is my meditation all the day long. The, thou, through thy commandments, hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Hmm, interesting. She had enemies all around. They were always with her, ever with her. And yet, if she were to say this, hold this in her heart, you know what? The commandments of God have actually made me more wiser. We would be wiser to focus on God's law, God's word, more than you know, trying to go you know, and, and you know, argue and debate with people out of the world. Well, she had basic smarts uh, simply from just reading the Bible. Um, I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients, because I keep thy precepts. The ancients, that's talking about old, older people, people from long ago. I mean, there's fault, uh, the science falsely so-called people that said, oh, we did this study, you know, or there was a study 100 years ago, and people will cite that as, uh, you know, the truth. And we just saw how poorly, you know, the... CDC can put out the science and it's just wrong science. They, they, they want to say that, oh, what we're talking about with covering up their, our, uh, your face with a mask and all this, uh, prevent you from getting sick, blah, blah, blah. Bad science, they, they by no means are some uh, uh, authority when it comes to the, the science of uh, wearing masks or whatever. It says here, what was that? Oh yeah, but yeah, the public health, health thing. Uh, it says here, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I mean, th this is a, a, a practice that Christians ought to engage in every single day, trying to abstain or refrain ourselves from the evil way. Why? Well, it tells us right here, uh, uh, we have, if we refrain from keep, uh, keeping the evil way, then we can serve God more, uh, we could be smarter, we can have the uh, understanding of the Lord with us. That's why we, we have to uh, keep God's word so that we can refrain from the evil way. Anytime you go out into the world and get involved in the uh, politics or whatever the world has to offer, well, then you start to come from the word of God. But when you draw closer to the word of God, well, you're drawing away from the foolishness and the wickedness of 
the world. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. So who taught Jael? Who taught her? Who teaches us? The Holy Spirit. God teaches us. And we have to maintain that perspective. We get our learning from the Lord. We have to seek God and get learning from him. Having the word of God as a basis for our learning is a a doorway into great blessings from God. Not just blessing for God, but knowing common sense, just having just a a sense about ourselves, about the world, where someone say, hey, you need to put on a mask so that this invisible virus can't get into you. And you'd be like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Why? Because you, how, oh, how I love thy law. You, you know the precepts of God. You, you have this right understanding in your mind. And J.L., as a woman of God, I believe that she understood this. She, she didn't have to go and get some degree. Uh, 100 and, verse 103 says, How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. If if the husband, it, or I'm sorry, if, if you, the wife does not feel safe in her home, that she doesn't feel that she can be strong or confident, uh, intelligent, if she's, if anyway, the, the, she doesn't feel safe there doing all those things, okay? Because again, the world says you got to leave the house to go get those things as a woman. If a wife doesn't feel that way inside her home, it's the man's fault. Because the man is the leader of the home. He's the one who's setting, he sets not just the example, but he sets up the structure of authority where the wife, she should be free to do all of this. She, she should be free to be smart, she, to, to read you know, uh, articles, to get understanding, to read her word, you know, she, uh, read the word of God. She should be free to do all of that. But if she's like, like oh, no, afraid and you know, doesn't want to, to you know, seek the Lord or go to church or do anything like that, well, that's the, the husband's fault. Uh, turn to First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Um, if you look at verse number seven, the Bible says, "Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge." This is for every young man that's going to be married someday. It says, "Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge." We ought to know our wife. I believe Hebrew, he knew JL. He knew that he could leave her at home. He knew that, that she was going to take care of things at the household, at the home. She wasn't going to be afraid of anything. That is the man's job to know the wife. All right. And then it says, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. No man is going to treat a, a weak vessel or something that's fragile with carelessness knocking it off a table or actually bumping into it. No, a weaker vessel is something that's fragile, delicate. It, it needs tender care. There is a, uh, 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 an old acronym, TLC, Tender Loving Care. That is what a man ought to give unto his wife, care for her, uh, um, uh, honor her, give honor unto the wife. And again, it's the man's fault if she does not feel honored or feel like she's in a place where she can actually serve him in the household. I mean, the, the woman is brought unto the man as a help for him. But if he's making everything a nightmare for her, well, she's probably not going to want to help him very much, which would cause her to n- not be a help for him, simply because he's just making it a worse place for her. Um, it says here, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, you need to listen to this, that your prayers be not hindered. Many, many men, husbands, their prayers are hindered because their relationship with their wife is not such as outlined in scripture right here. There's no honor. He's not treating her as a weaker vessel. He's not uh, you know, dwelling with her according to knowledge, knowing what she likes, knowing what she hates. This, this is a part of the life of a married man, right? Uh, and again, the Bible does tell us the difference between an unmarried man and a married man, just like there's a difference we read uh, between a married woman and an unmarried woman or a virgin. Flip over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, um, uh, lastly, I want to uh, address this issue here, and it does have to do with the home life. J.L., great woman of God, and I'll just say that she was not a silly woman. She wasn't silly. Okay, She wasn't... Uh, uh, it, she wasn't fooling around. She was very serious. She took her, her uh, role seriously, and that's why she can be a great role model 
of faith, especially for young girls and other women. In um, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, look at verse number 1. It says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, excuse me, false accusers, incoherent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Now these people, the, I, I think most people would agree that these are bad, horrible people. Now in the context of a silly woman, okay, JL was not one, but you know, unfortunately the truth is, uh, is that women are taken advantage of uh, more than men, and uh, especially nowadays. Uh, they, and a, a part of that reason I, I believe is, is this phrase of silly women. Uh, a, a woman that is just you know carefree doesn't really care about being serious she just wants her knight in shining armor her prince charming to come rescue her he's got to be six feet tall 250 pounds you know he's got a bench press 300 all of these different things that that uh, I, would, I would say a silly woman has in her mind and not considering you know what you just need to love the lord you need to serve god and you know what? if your uh beauty is from the, your faith in God, well, a, a good man of God will see that. But you know what? That you know, tall, you know, 300-pound benching guy, he, he may not even love the Lord. He may not even be saved. He may not even you know, have his mind on, head on straight. And these people, these smooth talkers, they can be predators, especially to women. And so when it says here, silly women, look at verse number 6. Verse number 6 says, For of this sort, so these wicked people, this perilous times of this sort, are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning but and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, apply this to Sisera. Sisera comes in, he's talking to her, he's the enemy, right? And he's trying to be be nice. I think that Cicero could be put in that category of a predator. You know, this guy he wants to get, you know get over on her. He wants to convince her, hey, I just need a glass of water, miss, please. You know. Meanwhile, he's fleeing for his life. He's uh, one of the wicked Canaanites that God has destroyed or uh, has sent destruction on. Uh, all of Jabin's army was destroyed. Cicero was the last one left. If she was a silly woman, you know, not a. Uh, uh, learned of the truth, not following God, she might have been like, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, come on in, sit on the couch, you know, it'd be great, you know, hey, can I get you some water, can I get you a sandwich, can I get you? she could have been doing all of that because her mind is not on serving God, her mind is just, you know, out in the world, just, just being a, a worldly, you know, lustful, just full of sin, she's not following God, she's just, oh, this is man that came into the door, here he is, I mean, Praise God that she didn't. She wasn't a silly woman. She didn't fall into that trap. But who knows what Cicero could have done to her? Because he was an enemy. He was fleeing from uh, death and destruction. Yes, he just asked her for water. I, I, I understand that he just asked her for water. But JL wasn't a silly woman, and she was like, "I know who you are. How about you have some milk?" Because she was smart. She knew what she was doing. How about I trust God? She didn't say this. How about I trust God and give you some milk, man? So how about you just lay right there? And uh, I'll be right back, right? But he crept in her house. He tried to manipulate her uh, and, and try to get her to help the enemy. Is basically what Cicero was trying to do. Uh, but she's like, no, no, no. She, she, she wasn't having that. She didn't say that to his face, but she still trusted God. Now look at verse, or I'm sorry, flip over back to Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. I like how uh, Cicero, he gives her the... Uh, uh, the, the request, he's like asking her or giving her instructions of what, how she ought to treat him. And I, I'm glad that she disobeyed him, right? She, she disobeyed this so-called predator that comes in here and she obeys the Lord. Uh, it, it's better to trust in the Lord than to have confidence in princes, the Bible says. D just because this guy shows up doesn't mean that, you know, she needs to, you know, cater unto him and, and you know, be, be uh, uh, the, the, the nicest woman ever. Of course, she was nice. She was mild and kind like a woman ought to be. She wasn't loud and clamorous, 
but at the same time, she was following God. She was serving God, not serving man. In verse number 20 in Judges chapter 4, it says again, he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee, and say, Is there any man here, that thou shalt say no. So he's giving her this instruction. She didn't obey that instruction. She, didn't, she, she wasn't uh, concerned with that. But I thought, find it interesting that this guy comes in trying to manipulate her, trying to get her to, to do what he said, but she didn't anyway. She wasn't a dunce. She wasn't a silly woman. She was strong. She was bold. She was informed. She, she knew about the enemy. She knew who Cicero was. Uh, probably th- through her husband, Heber, she probably knew all about Jabin and all the wicked stuff there. But she followed the Lord and she got her confidence from trusting God and trusting his word. And so obviously when it comes to uh, being a bold woman, which is I I think women ought to be bold. Of course, they need to be under uh, authority. A bold woman. She didn't have to go outside of her house. But the world will tell you, no, in order to be bold, you got to, you know, yell at men. You got to be loud. You got to. No, she didn't have to do all that. She was strong, confident intelligent aren't these things that the world will will try to brainwash young women into you know you got to go out into school you got to start a business you got to go out and do all these things uh be a ceo here have men working for you that's what the world will say that that's how you become bold and strong and confident intelligent no it's not following the lord reading the word of god that's how anybody man or, or female becomes strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Her faith in God made her great. Trusting God and not trusting men, uh, guiding her house. She obeyed. She was obeying God, guiding her house. She wasn't like 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 a man, you know, when it came to, you know, we, we didn't really go through the end of the story. But when it came to her taking the hammer and, you know, nailing his temples to the ground, she wasn't like, oh, where's that hammer or, you know, where where did, I, where did I leave the hammer? I mean, that's what a man would do, right? A man would just come in, where are my keys? Where? And what does a man do when he can't find anything? Well, he asks his wife. He has, he has the woman, you know. Where, where did I put this? Where's the last place I put that? Here, J.L. wasn't like, oh, man, that hammer, that nail, what, what did I do? No, she knew. She knew what she had to do. She knew her household. She knew where to find the hammer. She knew where she, to find the nail. And behold, the enemy of God is right there in her living room, right there. So all she had to do is just obey. And the faith that, that we, men and women, okay, J.L. is a hero of the faith because of her faith in God. She trusted him. She followed his word. We can uh, pick out bits here. I, I wouldn't be surprised if she had children, okay? Um, it doesn't say that she had any children. But at the same time, when it comes to a household, a, a, a woman she, guiding the household, the children are a part of that, especially when they're young and still in the household. So let's take a lesson from uh, J.L., who was blessed being a woman that she wasn't giving in to the world. She was very strong. And when I, when I say independent, okay, I'm not saying she was off by herself without her husband. I was saying, I'm saying that she was, a, she was learned of the scriptures and she knew the will of God inside her household and she executed that uh, uh, perfectly. Not only that, Barak and Deborah, the prophetess, were singing about her. I mean, wouldn't you want someone to sing a great song about you, a, a duet of sorts, singing about how, how great you are? This, this song in Judges chapter 5 is in our Bibles. We have it today to, to look at the song. Uh, it would be great if it's put to music. But again, J.L. is in the Bible, maybe not all over the place, but we can see her faith in God made her very strong. And her, her husband w- wasn't there. She's married, but her husband wasn't there. So she was able to serve God even though her husband was not there, and she pleased the Lord because of her faith. And we ought to take a lesson from that. You you know, what priority in our life ought to be is trusting God and faith in God, not putting confidence in people that we see or in ourselves. And so the title of the message uh, was, Heroes of the Faith, J.L., and uh, that is the, uh, I guess, the third installment of this series that we're going through. Uh, With that, I'm going to go ahead and pray. Father God, we do thank you for J.L. and her story. We thank you for the the bits of wisdom and truths that we can learn from her experience. God, and I pray that you would uh, uh, help us align our lives with your word, Lord, every day to, to, to 
uh, not just make sense of it, but to study it and to make sure that we are in your will, that we know what your will is. So whenever we're confronted with the enemy or confronted with lies, we know how to combat them uh, uh, with your uh, truth supporting us, God. I pray that you would uh, guide us all home safely. Please bless every uh, one that was here today. And uh, I do thank you for the souls that were saved today. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.